Good afternoon, everyone. Um, if you're wondering if I'm Vincent Shi, I'm not Vincent Shi. Um, he was supposed to be here today to um, moderate this panel, but unfortunately, he got called away by a client at the very last minute, and he, he had to go on an urgent business trip. Um, I'm Evangeline Quack. I'm a partner in the Stevenson Harwood's Shanghai office. Um, I am in part of the Marine and International Trade team. So usually, I am involved in shipping and trade disputes. Um, but I work very closely with the finance team um, to review documentation for operational leases. I usually get called in as well when things go wrong. Um, as you all might know, Stevenson Harwood is a brand name for ship finance, and we have offices in all the key shipping hubs, Shanghai, Singapore, Hong Kong, London, and the teams all work together seamlessly on um, major, major projects. Uh, today, I am joined by uh, four gentlemen on this panel, and I'm going to give them uh, the opportunity to introduce themselves to us before I uh, introduce the session today, and ask some hopefully not too difficult questions. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Albert Ganyushin. I um, am head of capital markets at uh, uh, Dr. Peters Group. Um, Dr. Peters Group is uh, um, a real asset uh, investment manager focusing on equity funds, investing in real assets across shipping, aviation, and uh, real estate. Uh, in shipping, we have a history of investing um, uh, approximately 4.4 billion uh, in uh, shipping assets uh, in terms of asset value and uh, we uh, own uh, all layers of equity fund management in shipping including fund administration, investment management, commercial uh, and technical and crewing. So, um, uh, we have not invested uh, in uh, uh, new money in the shipping sector for the uh, last few years, uh, focusing on growing our aviation business, uh, particularly in wide, uh, wide body aircraft leasing. But uh, we look forward to the opportunities in the shipping market going forward now that hopefully the industry um, is stabilizing. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Gordon Gore. Uh, I'm the CEO, also, also the co-founder of Killing Capital. This could be a new name to you guys because uh, it's one of the few funds that is doing the equity investment, also some uh, direct financing or alternative financing for, uh, with main focus on shipping. And we also we quite broaden that scope to maritime logistics. Uh, we had done business in the last two or three years mostly out of China, and we are investing in overseas companies' uh, equities or directly we invest in the shipping assets. And recently, actually, uh, starting from the middle of last year, we are, we are starting our activity in China and uh, uh, with expectation that Chinese capital is growing and looking out of China. So we are raising RMB uh, and this that is still in the process. Uh, of course, with the, with the kind of uh, challenge on the, on the uh, you know, foreign exchange uh, control in China, so with the RMB funds we connected in China, uh, we, that we cannot be uh, sent off China. Then we are starting to look into the domestic uh, uh, market. Um, however, the shipping market in China locally are not as strong or active as outside. So we are also looking a little bit uh, off shipping, but uh, more logistic wise. Uh, but that will be maybe uh, explained later in later discussion. So uh, in short, uh, in, in short uh, we are starting, but we are uh, looking out uh, China, also looking to in China uh, with, uh, with the funds in hands. And, uh, <coughs> As as um, uh, a as in a very rapid growing market, uh, we are quite confident that this is going to be a, a bridge between uh, Chinese money and the shipping world. Thank you. 
Okay, my name is Martin Hooker. I'm uh, here for Mirbaum Capital. Uh, Mirbaum is a, uh, an advisory boutique that is working exclusive uh, with Oaktree, and we provide um, senior lease finance. Senior means somewhere normal bank leverage, but on projects or on clients that banks will not do, which can have uh, reasoning that it's not the top 20 uh, that uh, the banks follow fall all over themselves, as we heard on the on the previous panel, or that it's a project that needs speed or flexibility, or a project that may have negative cash flows to start with. So um, what we basically do is we try to fill the gap that banks left behind. We're also there um, to uh, refinance legacy portfolio pieces. Uh, in case uh, there is a good discount offered to the owner, he can come to us and uh, we'll provide finance there. And this, this is basically what we do. We do stuff that banks don't do at a different price, different speed, different flexibility. And um, uh, we do that on a worldwide basis. Uh, scale is uh, going from 5 million on a single transaction upwards to about 30, 40, 50 million, not beyond that, because then it comes to, to a size where banks like uh, DNB are much better suited than we are. Uh, my name is Richard Moore. I'm Managing Director of RMK Maritime. We're a London and New York based investment bank and financial advisory firm. Uh, so we work with private equity funds advising <laughs> and investing their money into shipping. Um, and we raise primary and secondary debt and investments for ship owners. Um, I think over the last couple of years we've raised and deployed 1.75 billion of equity um, and have structured and deployed about $3 billion of debt or debt related products. Um, and with the advisor to Euronav on their purchase of Generate. Thank you. So today's panel is um, the about alternative finance. We've seen the previous panels where we've talked about the banks being traditional source of financing, and then of course finance leasing. Um, I think. I've read reports recently where we've seen that shipping is becoming an increasingly attractive source of alternative investments for private equity funds. Uh, we, the market, I, I personally think that the shipping market is finally picking up, confidence is returning to the market, and there is a need of, for capital. But we've also seen, for example, some traditional Western shipping banks exiting um, the, market, the, the ship financing market. So. We have seen owners looking around for um, alternative financing if, for example, they're not able to secure a finance lease. So I wonder if I could invite the panel to share their experience um, uh, in the shipping market and have they seen a pick up in interest in PE funds funding? Um, I, I think uh, from, from my point of view, uh, given that we are uh, an equity investor and have a long background in being one of the biggest KG houses in Germany and now transitioning towards being an institutional manager of equities in real assets and also comparing um, our uh, investments in other real assets such as aviation and uh, real estate. I, I would say that shipping has an equity problem, generally speaking. It is um, uh, a, a very small sector from the investor perspective in terms of equity um, and it has uh, produced extremely volatile returns in the past and even in terms of public um, equities listed companies uh, these uh, many of these uh, best in class shall we say independent shipping companies listed on western markets certainly uh, are quite small and fairly insignificant from a global investor perspective. And so when we talk about private equity, let's just be, uh, uh, to the extent that we can, clear about what we mean. If we talk about um, uh, big buyout houses that at attract all kinds of capital and invested across the board, I think this is still shipping a very, very challenging area uh, from the pure equity perspective. 
uh, for sure, there's been um, a lot of um, uh, capital flowing into the industry where it has been replacing debt finance. Uh, and some capital have been flowing into the industry to fund recapitalizations and effectively injections of equity to recapitalize businesses. Um, but uh, you know, we 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 uh, as a company stayed largely away from that because, as, as I see, we see ourselves as a long-term provider of equity capital, and for that, industry has not been very good. I have to say, uh, whether that. The, there are greater opportunities for that going forward. Um, perhaps there are, we think there are. But there is a problem with scale, there is a problem with track record of returns, uh, and uh, there is a problem in attracting broader equity investors into the shipping sector compared to other sectors. Uh, and, that is a, and that is a big challenge. So I think private equity is going into essentially restructurings and replacing of the debt. Um, but from the longer term perspective, it remains an extremely hard challenge. Uh, if I may add to that, I think uh, shipping not only has an equity issue, equity definitely is lacking in shipping for, for quite a while, because equity is, is what you need to buffer the cyclicality. Um, but I think uh, for shipping it's also uh, rather crucial at the moment that the regulatory environment that we have on the banking side is very pro-cyclical. So uh, you, you see a bank being forced uh, in last year's dry bulk market to ask for steep repayments and for locked-in charter rates which were rather not sense-making to any owner, whereas now where the market is better, you see the very same banks having a fantastic rating on the project where the price of the vessel is like 30% higher than it was a year ago, and uh, they finance the vessel trading spot. So banks are in a way uh, forced by the regulatory environment, not necessarily by their insights. Um, very pro-cyclical, so they will be bullish and cheap when the market is, is good, and they will be very risk-averse when the market is bad, and they will not look at any projects that are cash flow negative. We saw that last year a lot in uh, dry bulk. We see that this year that there are all sorts of projects coming from the tanker space because banks just shy away, although uh, an, an MR2 is at lowest prices ever at the moment. So the, the downside risk is very limited. But for, for banks, this is very difficult to deal with. And even at, that, at this point, you have difficulties to, to find new equity usually. From, uh, from our perspective, we really like private equity. Um, we think as long as it's invested carefully and they make educated uh, investments and decisions, it's very beneficial to the industry. We do see some investors um, put too much money in. Uh, we've seen scenarios where it leads to oversupply of vessels. But um, I think it's a benefit to the industry. It's about the fifth iteration of equity that has come into the shipping markets from our assessment um, and they've got very deep pockets so I think used wisely um, it's, a, it's a very valuable tool for us in, in, in this shipping business. And I think you, sh you should also understand what, what your equity partners are after. Uh, definitely, I think um, private equity, we're all economic animals um, you've got to know what you're dealing with when you're dealing with certain equity, private equity funds. Um, so yes, you definitely have to be uh, aware of that and use it in the right way. All right. Thank you. I think the last one to say something on that. Oh, well, I think uh, on this panel, I'm the only Chinese. And maybe I can say something from Chinese money's view. Um, we are, as I said uh, just now, we are. Uh, starting the RMB fundraising in China, and then we get a chance to sit with the uh, deep pockets, as Richard says, of Chinese money like, uh, what's that name of that? Um, Sequoia China, IDG, Legend Capital. Uh, these guys are sitting with the billions and billions of dollars, and they ask me the question is like, why and how to invest in shipping? And for them, Shipping is boring, be frank. 
for this rapidly growing China economy, they are not patient with, as we even very satisfied with 20% ROI or any things, they feel that's boring. So, but for us, it's a different view on that, because I, I personally from the shipping industry, and we see the future, and we also know the industry like equity. So when the industry like equity and when the industry is not going to t disappear tomorrow, there's a chance for the, for the money. And for us, we look into it. Uh, investment, the philosophy is investment in shipping can be simplified in two things, that either assets or the operation. Because as people can see, a lot of financial owner today from China emerging, leasing companies have become so active. So we see also uh, the same happening outside China. And owner, and the capital is, is, become, is becoming more and more like owner of the ship and the operation is separated. So for us, either we invest in shipping, if we do that traditional way, so it's more about the entry point, the timing. They talk about timing, and we say people are so panicked about the shipping in the last two or three years, even 10 years, so why not? So it's a good time, it's more about when we start. If we do that in 2016 or uh, 2015 in Bowker, then it's good, 20, 40, even 40% 40 if we do that on that. And also look at the right candidates with liquidity, right? So for us, we don't care it is Bowker or container or tanker or offshore, it's more about timing. And then operation, then it's something we can find sexy up there because operation is very light asset operation in shipping. Maybe something new we can find. So we saw a lot of BPs interesting on our table and could be spending the whole afternoon on that. But good things are, are interesting are happening and we a lot of new technology or new business model are applied or being so, um, kind of um, applied in this operation of a shipping industry. So that's what we say in bo on both sides uh, of this shipping world, i.e. Sh assets or operation, we see PE have a lot of potential to do in that. Thank you. Can I just add to that? You said um, uh, shipping can be boring, which it can be, and the last panel said shipping is not sexy. I'd just like to say we at RMK try and make shipping sexy. Um, so I think we enjoy this industry. Hey, sorry, I think it's full full context for that, Richard. Is yeah, from this uh, the the rapid growing Chinese money. They thought the shipping is boring because it has been there for many many hundreds of years, and we don't see uh, a very very creative as, as so far very creative way on the shipping so investment operation. Right? It's like you buy low and sell high. It is like that, and uh, we don't see revolutionary technology happening <laughs> on shipping yet. Yet, I uh, suggest so yet. But my personally, I say from shipping, I saw it's very interesting. Mm. Well, if, if, if I may add to that, boring. Uh, uh, well, what, what, what you often have is, is private equity saying, okay, we want to make a killing, 25% return minimum, and preferably double our money within uh, 12 months. That's not possible in shipping. Um, at least not uh, if, if the owner, if your client wants to make money as well. So what you've got to do is you first have to educate private equity what works in shipping and how it works, and then you have uh, to use some financial structuring in order to have the the private equity at the right place in your, f in your structure, uh, having private equity all over just doesn't work because the return requirements that the private equity have, they are not met in shipping unless you do speculative uh, new building orders like in the past where you put in 10% down payment, you hope for the prices to go 20% up and then you've tripled your money over a few years. That works. But that only works if you're right in timing. If you're wrong, you lose all of it. Thank you. Um, maybe this is a question for Gordon, which is that um, I understand that the accounting rules in China will be changing in 2019, where um, long-term charges will be recorded as a debit, so that off-balance sheet leasing for finance purposes may become less attractive. So I wonder if Gordon thinks that because of that, PE financing might um, become more popular in, in China? Uh, so your question is about PE 
will be popular in China on investment in shipping in 2019, right? You, that's, that's your question? Uh, I would say still, as, as a friend here saying, uh, education process. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is still the shipping is a global business. And the challenge over there, as I say, is how we move money from China outside of China. And that is something not that it markets or anything. It's more about you know political things. I would say today, or it's it, it, we. That's also the question, the, the difficulty we are facing today. So if you are one, if I answer question short, is the pure RMBP money is difficult in shipping in 2019 today, especially as you see the uh, oh, 18, sorry, 18 or 19, especially as you see the, the U.S. and China. China are in kind of uh, you know controversial things. Um, it is it is a bit difficult, I would say. However, the domestic market in China, if we extend the shipping scope to a maritime or logistic concept, then we see a lot of opportunities. Also, we extend to a new technology, as we say, like cleaner energy, and uh, even I would say like uh, blockchain. Because you know, you, globalized people are looking at a hard topic, and we want to use that, apply that into shipping business. Then, yeah, we see some interesting proposals also or projects going on. Um, we've got about twelve minutes left. I wonder if anybody has um, questions for the panelists. Well, maybe I have a question to Albert. Albert, how, how, how do you see the European banks uh, moving over the, the next couple of years? When, you, when you've set up your institutional fund, will they be there to finance? Will you go to Chinese leasing? What, what, where do you see the future there? Well, um, as I said, I, we take a perspective of uh, equity investor in creating a product that is sustainable from the um, equity equity um, uh, equity side of things, um, and compare shipping to other industries. Uh, uh, bank debt is uh, not where it needs to be. So, give you an example: um, aviation today. Um, uh, uh, L, um, uh, uh, senior debt at um, 60 to 70 percent LTV is uh, readily available from any major bank um, without any problem. So, from the perspective of uh, equity fund investor putting a fund together, uh, th that leaves us to focus on the equity component and putting the deal together and the commercial side and leasing and everything. And so, that's uh, that's quite conducive to doing business in scale, shipping. Uh, far more challenging because you know my perception is you know banks don't really like shipping at the end of the day they're still contracting whatever they say they focus on the corporates uh, corporate lending and uh, uh, and and really not there as far as I can see at at this point in time to back um, uh, shipping as an infrastructure asset class. It's more uh, financing of uh, assets for corporates, which is what, what they're really thinking about. So, um, uh, and, and that is a challenge, therefore, that, that w what does this mean for us? It means uh, that uh, uh, debt needs to come from alternative sources, uh, uh, perhaps from uh, capital markets, you know, um, uh, bond, bond-like debts indicated to, again, uh, investors. At the end of the day, um, or come from um, uh, you know dedicated debt private equity firms that provide that you know service, um, uh, and generally at levels much lower than experienced in other industries, reflecting the volatility of the shipping sector. So I think if you asked a, a normal equity investor today, let's say a pension fund, what kind of uh, leverage they would like to see in the shipping assets. I think the answer would be no more than 40 percent. In fact, it would be the same answer if you ask them what leverage you'd like to see them uh, in uh, European real estate assets. I know the answer would be no more than 50 percent, sometimes even 40 percent. That is the thinking of a Main Street, you know, kind of pension fund investor. 
um, uh, and that should give us an idea where the true senior debt should be, I think, in the, in, in the sector, and that really the rest uh, ultimately is, uh, is equity money. Now, that is disguised in uh, so many different ways in the shipping sector, right? So, um, um, but, uh, and, and that I think is not helpful uh, generally for the industry because uh, if you don't have uh, kind of clear rules of the game for investors where, you know, debt is debt and equity is equity and mass is mass and et cetera, just like in any other industry, frankly, um, then it makes uh, uh, a normal uh, institutional investor, uh, you know, that invests across the piece, uh, quite skeptical of the industry. And then it leads to all sorts of different capital coming in and out uh, of the industry and increasing already what is already quite a volatile sector. I don't know if you, uh, if you agree with that. <laughs> Any? Uh, I think um, it, it, it's correct to say moderate debt at sort of 50-55% or thereabouts is, is kind of normal these days. I think for a lot of ship owners that's why um, uh, their corporate credits, um, they access the bank debt that was talked about in the previous uh, two panels ago, um, and that's great, but for the average ship owner they can't always access it at good pricing. And as a consequence, a lot of owners are here in China because I think what China is offering through leasing is a fantastic product and it fills a huge gap in the market. So um, I, think, I think Chinese leasing will be here for a long time because it provides better type of funding than some of the traditional banks are offering to non-corporate credits. Um, I just wanted to check if anybody now has questions from the audience in light of um, what has just been said. Many of the PE funds, uh, because they consider shipping to be a high-risk industry, uh, they insist that uh, their equity is senior equity. Now, of course, you have the bank loan, you know, which is se the most senior, and then the uh, PE fund, they have senior equity. So any risk is all on the ship owner. So I was just wondering whether you know, uh, ship owners, you, know, uh, uh, you find that ship owners are balking at, uh, at taking all the risk. Um, I think, I think, yes. Um, private equity think they're the smartest guys in the room. Um, <laughs> we are. <laughs> <laughs> often they are. Um, but I was sitting with one of our biggest funds um, earlier in the week, and they've lost. The only time they've lost money is actually in shipping. They've made money in every other sector. They've lost money in shipping. And as a consequence, when they look at investing in shipping now, it's now on a more secured basis. So it's either equity invested as debt or it's equity wanting a preferred position. So they have first security and the ship owner takes the first loss. But then they rationalize that by saying, well, um, you are the ship owner. You know what you're doing and therefore you should take the first loss. And that's why we're backing you. Well, the, the, the problem for private equity and shipping is that this is not like an Airbus 380, which is an Airbus 380 all over the world, but this, this is a very individualized assets, where uh, one Supramax uh, bulker is not like the other one. The, the way we try to address that is uh, by having teamed up uh, with a ship owner who provides the technical and commercial expertise, but still we feel that it's very difficult to evaluate the value and the commercial viability of an asset at any given moment in time. So the guy who has the main commercial interest in uh, <laughs> such an investment is the guy who ultimately takes the decision, and that's a ship owner. So he should have the first loss piece because he also has the upside. 
So uh, the, w w the way we do that is that we don't take upside sharing, but we have a fixed price to the money we provide, and the ship owner takes the first loss, but has 100% of the upside. So uh, he's the one who manages the vessel on a day-by-day -day basis, who has taken the decision to buy it, and uh, who will also take the decision whether to do more maintenance during operations or maybe to spend later on more money in dry dock. So um, he, he is the guy who runs this lady. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would just add that, um, you know, from our perspective, let's, let's call a spade a spade. If somebody wants to provide preferred equity, really, in the classical capital structure uh, language, that is junior debt or mezzanine debt. And there's nothing wrong with having mezzanine and junior debt in a transaction uh, if the economics of such transaction will support that. So I think people uh, from the private equity world that uh, typically come from debt or distressed backgrounds or mezzanine backgrounds who, uh, who provide this service is very useful for the industry because it articulates uh, very clearly often uh, the economics of the project because you have to have that to support this kind of structures. Um, and I think that is very useful and fantastic uh, for the industry. However, uh, this still leaves us with the question of um, who is going to provide the common pari passu equity, first loss equity, right? And if it's the um, ship owner, then we kind of go back to this concept of you know, a set of people in the world who somehow decide how to allocate equity to this industry. And uh, I think this is kind of where I have an issue with this because uh, it's non-transparent, I don't think it is efficient, and I think it is uh, removed from you know, many principles of equity capital markets that we see in other industries. So, and that's kind of where you have some, sometimes this volatility. So uh, we would be delighted to see private equity come in both on a preferred piece and a common equity piece just like they do in an, you know, in an LBO, frankly, right? So, uh, and that would uh, uh, provide a more normalized, if you like, capital to this industry from the private equity perspective. Alternatively, do it as simple as other industries do, you know, have senior debt and the rest is equity. So, um, and if you have an equity cushion of, you know, 50, 60% on the project, that surely is, survive, is sufficient to survive um, most volatile periods, including in shipping. Uh, I would imagine that would be sufficient. So it's kind of really this uh, dilemma, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also uh, I think uh, uh, the, uh, what the, this unique class of investors called ship owners do or don't do, effectively, uh, and, and how they fit into this uh, uh, financing world for shipping going forward. And uh, as far as I can see, uh, the most time of the shipping history, uh, PE is not there, has not been there because it's more a, a money from the ship owner and the banks. That's what they do the financing of the shipping. And PE is more an alternative financing when the industry is in trouble, as I see. So if the industry is in trouble and PE who want to get into the industry, is very naturally be, has be, be, be prudent and choose the right way, as Robert said, mezzling or junior debt in that form to protect themselves and limit the downside. So uh, I, I don't see any uh, irrational on this kind of approach. Uh, of course, a case by case depends on who you are dealing with and what timing. For example, like today, look at this when people are so optimistic about bulkers, saying maybe P will be more. Uh, bold in the form of investment, they could be uh, would like to more exposed to the risk today on the investment, uh, as as I imagine. Well, I think they are actually. Um, Guggenheim has just, which is a private equity uh, family fund, um, they have just ordered two VLCCs in their own name. Um, so I think private equity has traditionally um, gone through shipping. They've taken. A uh, a secured position, they've got some upside, they believe it looks good, and then they move into taking more equity risk. So at the moment, they're backing the crude oil market, they believe that's going to improve, and they've gone and ordered two ships. 
we, we see the same approach from, from our investors who say, okay, bulk has already gone up substantially. Uh, we should be more conservative there. Let's rather find uh, products and crude. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see that our um, time's up. I want to thank the panelists for making the time today to be here. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.